it's always who gets into the rhythm first yes. uh, of, uh, of the game. I think the game uh, started already. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, so Akron is on the ball faster than the Viennese girls, but they are getting right into a scrum. I will see, uh, sometimes it's uh, very important for the defending team or for the Divinis team. Um, there's a very fast attack and a quick pass to the other side of the basket. They're already pushing on the goalkeeper. So the basket is empty now for a moment. But the attackers defended that pretty alright so far. Something that's very important for the defensive uh, team to force a uh, different rhythm on the attacking team um, to uh, slightly better control their game than they're what they're used to play so that's that's one of the tactics that you can apply to try to stop uh, a stronger team to get them out of the rhythm to slow down their game if they're used to a very fast paced game to quick passes block to pass uh, force them into scrums that's usually one of the tactics you can you can use to force them into a uh, situation they're not that much used to because they're usually very much um, uh, used to apply pressure to have fast passes to have quick counter attacks, so we'll see what the Viennese uh, women can do here uh, against the Karen. Yeah, we see it now. The, the uh, girls from Vienna to, to attack the goal. Uh, they are on the side of a Karen. Uh, they're coming from close side, but they're already in the scrum. And that is the strength of Norway. They get the ball and they make the counter attacks. Yes. So this is uh, that always that amazing. And then you see three. Yes. Three directly on the goal. And uh, the, the attack pattern is uh, very similar. They try to go come from the top of the goal, attack, and then they, they make the pass down to left or right usually for the block in between so that the defender can't uh, switch or go in motion. It's, it, it's for me almost amazing like the Norway, the ball control when they attack from the above. Yeah. We tried this in the training camp and no one can match that but they are so precise and passing the ball it's from the top and that is uh, for me in general, uh, ball handling, um, there are a lot of teams like, like you can see right now that uh, put the ball in, in close and have it in close confine as long as possible. And then there are teams who are playing, as you see here, with Akaren, who did a quick counter attack now, which you sadly didn't see on the camera. Um, so they are keeping the balls in close confine, or they either have it very open, so they are very agile with the ball and they can pass it very fast and, and can ver have rather quick movements with the ball. Uh, I and mean if you can perfectionize it and um, have your team play around it, you might lose it a bit more often, but if your team is strong enough in regaining the ball, this gives you very much uh, of, a, of a better flow for the game and uh, you can improve your speed and your passing game. I have a question. When you do your training and your swimming, mm -hmm. how do you do that? Um, we uh, very recently um, went to, uh, we have a swimming practice uh, once a week for conditioning and we've started implementing uh, warm-up and swimming practice uh, with ball. So that's how we try to uh, uh, improve our ball, uh, ball handling game. When I took over the, 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 the national coach thing, so I decided heavy swimming practice with ball. Mm -hmm. I never seen uh, in, in soccer, there's no one running whatever, two kilometers uh, without a ball. Yeah, coming back to the game, uh, so seeing the, the strong attack from uh, Norway, uh, so now uh, the Austrian team getting more and more... Yeah, uh, nice pass uh, behind the back there yeah. from the Norwegian woman, the other one was already in position. So the Vienna starts to losing the, the, defense, uh, the, the defender under the goal, and that opens the room for Norway it's a quite big uh, invitation to yes. be there and uh, bring themselves in a scoring position and uh, the Norway later uh, ice cold to utilize they're, ex they're executing this. very well. 
so they have the players and they have the potential to have very quick scoring you see that that's one of the big differences be between a, a lot of teams is the, the time they actually need to score um, we see with the top teams that it takes oh there's the ball dropped down um, it takes very little time for the top teams to actually score on the goalkeeper uh, even if he's in uh, well-placed positioning and if the defender is not there and if the attackers are not doing the job and blocking the other side of the basket or are in between the ball keeper and, and your goal, uh, there's very little chance if the ball gets into the right position for you to block it uh, in, in the last moment. So you always have to have the defender in the right position. You have to be in between the goal and in between the attacker. If the attack comes from above and uh, or you have to block the pass uh, if the attack is coming from bottom you have to be uh, with the defender and try to block them under the basket. In our Duisburg men's team we had to say in a good, uh, good scorer should be a little bit dumb because he should not consider what he's doing. Yep. He should do it intentionally. Do it. Yeah. The guys or girls which are consuming too much, it's yeah. too late. Don't think. <laughs> Thinking is overrated in yeah. sports. <laughs> <laughs> not in every sport but for this position as <laughs> yeah, it's, as it's, it's, it's mostly yeah, muscle, muscle, yeah. muscle memory rather than, yes, than thinking yes, and yes. executing so by, they should, by they choice. should think about. So we have now a penalty against uh, Vienna. Yeah, I think we're so the basket. And uh, I think I did not see the number. So this was uh, a chance for Akawin to get uh, get it at three zero and make their life easier but it's already they're dominating controlling the game so the goalkeeper oh, the goalkeeper oh. Went straight oh that, that's easy oh but oh she got a grip on the ball she oh yes. at the right moment we'll see if uh, the akron play can strip the ball away I have to be honest, I'm, I'm really starting to enjoy um, the shirts with the numbers uh, when commentating because it makes life of commentary so much easier. But yeah, she, uh, Sabrina Joya is defending for Vienna and she's trying to just keep the ball in her possession now. Um, but I think the Akan player ripped, stripped it away. We'll see if she can come down. Oh, I think <laughs> she actually scored. So but I think they called the, the foul first because she yeah I guess she, she did she she called uh, I think they called the foul yeah. and uh, because when the ball get loose so that means two minutes and now I saw Amanda going into the water uh, so see, you think it's, I think usually Denise Schmitz will come in next to defend. Defended the penalty against Germany. Yeah. Now Amanda is preparing herself for that, and uh, she is one of the, the I would say, one, one of the best the female players to play currently yes. in underwater rugby. <laughs> Most so likely. <laughs> big challenge, but Amanda is cool. Highly motivated. So no, it's Magdalena Wurzel who's defending. Let's see how she can do against Amanda Barsley. But Amanda's already um, under her back and she's trying to get a neck grip. I think she, yeah, she will rip her Yeah, oh. Very, well done by her. very nice. So neck this grip. was very pretty nice cool. Defense. Never lose the control of the ball. That was uh, woman power. Respect for that attack. That is that was great. Yeah, it's also for the female team. Strength and strength training and strength conditioning training is becoming more and more of a part of the sport. Then, like the men, when you see the top the top male players, they are pretty much uh, on on level with standard semi uh, professional athletes, like in American football. And it's getting more and more for the female teams as well that strength training and condi uh, extra conditioning training, not just on the water rugby, is becoming more, more and more of a big part uh, for their practices to be on the top level to mm -hmm. compete in world championships, European championships. For me, I don't care because they should bring it to the training camp. Yeah. I just make decision. 
So they have to deliver. If they don't deliver, they're out. Well, yeah. simple. Yeah, that's, uh, that's for the clubs to do. Yeah, that, that that's, that's the, uh, not so the, so the per personal motivation. So you yeah. have to have this 100% uh, motivation. Oh, very nice. Uh, very nice attack. And you see there are always three Norwegian yeah. players. Uh, directly the, the, the counter attack they don't uh, go back to the surface they oh. stay on the bottom they yeah, fight wow. and four blue players yeah. so that is what I, I see of a dominant play physical controlled so yeah. and Norway is heavily um, relying on their speed as well so they have very very fast players. They're using the the speed to have very quick counter attacks. They're using the speed of more than one player, not just single man counters and yeah. normal counter attack. Yeah. So okay. they have three players under the basket. They immediately have a blocking situation. They immediately have the opportunity to pass on either side of the goal, uh, and that just makes making counter attacks extremely efficient as well as very very dangerous for the def defending team. So. Usually what we say is um, you have to stop the counter-attack before it's reaching the goal. That's the most important part of the defenders and the attackers. Don't let them get over the middle to your basket. Stop them as early as possible. But if you have three players doing a fast break with high speed and high velocity, it's what very, very what hard what to I stop them. What I can see uh, also in the World Championship, uh, they, they are forcing each other to the speed. So when when a lady don't uh, be under the water, mm -hmm. some ladies pass the ball where the team it should be. Yeah. We've seen yeah, it. This this playing in the free room and saying, hey, there you, you yeah. basically should be, and they're going there. Yeah. Now it's not uh, waiting, and in the D case, say now you could see in this game, they really. We're underwater. They 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 attack now with four ladies. Uh, the 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 goal. Yeah, it's the same play we see from e even the Norwegian national teams also on the men's side and with Molde that they pass mostly in the direction the player should be, without considering if he's actually there uh, at the point in time or not. Yeah, they are just waiting and expecting it to be like that. And if it's not, then it's the fault of the player who wasn't there, not the fault of the one who who exactly. actually made the pass to the to the right spot. And there comes a, a lot down to uh, to practicing it and um, having uh, players in training uh, for the for the clubs practice practic practicing it, having the players in the right motion, having the players in the right positioning. So yeah, that's a very big part uh, of of conditioning and uh, play practice with your team. Yeah, and that's of course uh, also one of the, the difficulties of a national coach. Uh, you don't have so much uh, chance to play against equal teams, mm -hmm. uh, so you 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 are starting to compromise in some way. Yeah, no, as a female coach, you try to play against uh, um, men and or juniors or whatever, and this is all not really. It's not the same optimal. level. It's not the same pace. It's very no. Optimal. It's it's uh, different the, the strength the levels. Just and not the, 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 the game of a man is more physical. Yes. No? So that is somehow to find the right mixture which fits. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's very difficult to say. When we had the OCE Cup in, in Austria this year, where we had tried to have a female competition as well as a male competition. Um, but it's tough to get um, a lot of the top teams uh, to join in if the uh, playing field is not leveled. So um, the men have the Euroleague, which was a great improvement yeah. for, for the club bases. And a lot of national team players try to join the Euroleague to have high level competition with two times 15 minutes playing time. But yeah, for the females it's, uh, it's more difficult. I think there has to be female initiative to actually uh, provide those tournaments as well. So it, it's got to be the, the national federations as well as the players themselves to f enforce and have those competitions for themselves. There are some tournaments, but usually um, it's club tournaments and not national team tournaments. Yeah, I totally agree. And it's also a matter of uh, cost on the basis, eh? um, uh, how to cover that. Uh, so 
Uh, we decided to have before the uh, World Championship a training camp in uh, Copenhagen with the Danish team. So uh, to get our rhythm into the, 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 the game. So I think it will help. Uh, in front of the European Championship we put not so so such uh, competition and now you can right. see. Back into the game, there's another fast break by the new yeah. team. We've seen two players already again uh, closing into the basket very, very quickly. One position on, on the back side of the goal, uh, but she couldn't quite get the pass and the Venus when you can get the ball back out into the playing field. Actually, uh, they're doing quite well the first minutes to uh, block the ball in the middle of the field, try to pressure them as much as possible. Uh, but now again, two women uh, counter-attacking on the basket. Quick yeah, pass over the goalkeeper. The defender is much too late. Yes. The defender is just... Uh, the defender uh, has to be in place before the, the yeah. attack is there. So the defender is just there and following the attack and not acting as a real defender. So it's just... Uh, just a waste of time so <laughs> the defender was uh, i mean you, you can possibly play without a defender but then you have to have all four players uh, being in the pressure position against the opponent don't let them let them come to the basket with such speed yeah when there are three norwegian girls and with one goalkeeper yeah. i would say it's a matter of time that's an overpower position yeah. but she did actually uh -huh. quite well to defend the so i was there I think quite well to defend the goal against them for a couple of seconds to actually so give the defender time so to So the performance of the in. goalkeeper is cool, uh, that's, that's, that's really impressive, it's not uh, yeah. that Now we see again there is yeah. uh, one in, in the more mid side of the basket, one in the corner yeah. and trying to yeah, get the block the position. The, no, the and the second the wave is doing exactly the same, the second wave yeah. is coming in, taking position on left side and right side of the basket. And yeah. That's the position the so defender the has to defend, the defender yeah. has to defend the position and the attackers have to try to block the ball from getting to those positions on the side. So the, the, the goalkeeper is just basic nothing to claim, it's protecting, that's not easy in the first wave to, to get the goal, but uh, the defender is too late yes. on, on the, 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 the basket. Uh, we see it here again. So now the defender is now on the basket. Yeah. The exchange of defender, but they are too static. They are too static in this. The defender at that moment, it's, they always were che uh, checking their replacement uh, under the goal, and it's not. And uh, they are not quick enough to follow the ball. Yeah. No goalkeeper on the goal. Oh, I think it was in. And this was in. So you see now the, the physical condition of uh, Vienna goes low. So we have another five minutes. I forecast at 5-0, it's 7-0. Yeah, it's so I was wrong. <laughs> I think one of the problems is if the, the speed of the game, the pace of the game is actually um, way above your own uh, uh, playing level and if there are some players missing in key positionings, key positions as, as well which you know because there's a, a very important defender of the minis girls mi missing here um, then those situations at, at their own basket can get very chaotic uh, very fast and we see Sabrina Shoya now going out I think she might have um, been injured no, but, uh, but, uh, I think in this, this situation when you, you at that scoring things, then you should concentrate of on defending. Mm. It, now they try to still play with Norge uh, New, uh, Norwegians. They try to, to attack, but they don't manage to control their own ball possession over their own half. Mm. So in the second half, they even did not come close to the Norwegian goal. So, and that thing is, okay, learn out of the game. Let's do solid defending, concentrating on uh, learning how I can defend the, the goal better. 
Huh? One ball, there are three ladies around. One gets the ball, goes up, and all other two go up as well. Yes. So this doesn't help. And it's just a matter of time. You see more blue girls under the water than wow. white. Now goalkeeper losing from the goal that makes easy no one under the goal. Yeah. Ex try to exchange during an attack. Yeah. That's actually the duty of the goalkeeper trying to exchange to pu either push the one down that's that's taking the attack or signal that the moment is safe to defend. Yeah. Usually when we have games... Can't smell coffee this long? No. Usually um, when you have two teams where one team is uh, clearly in the losing side and you have one team that it's really overpowering them, um, it's often a coach's decision what you want to try in the game because sometimes you, you just know you're going to lose. Uh, and you're obviously going to try to defend and keep it serious, serious as long as possible, or even, even score if, if there's the possibility to do so. Uh, I mean, there have been lucky punch games um, uh, quite often. Okay, but now it's 9-0 again. 9-0, there's, uh, the, there's the question uh, also coach uh, from the coaching perspective, uh, what are you going to try to do, what are you going to try to learn from the game? What are you going to try and take away from the game? Do you want to strictly focus on your defense? Do you want to keep your positioning? Or do you want to try to get into your, your opponent's half and get one or two attacks in to try to force them into their half? Um, even though you're taking the counter attacks uh, in, in the long run, like we see right now. But if, if you want to have to practice and if you want to have um, the, the opportunity, you don't get the, the opportunities that often to play against such a strong team. So if you want to try and get out there and try to score um, and try to have at least some practice at the opponent's basket, that's a coach's choice to take. This is what we see right now is they're trying to force uh, the Norwegians into the onto the side. They're trying to keep the ball in possession. But then again, we see those quick counter attacks where two Norwegian women uh, are sprinting out from their own basket. And the important thing is what we're seeing now is a, they're not there's not just one and there are three more coming from for the second wave to go in and have a straight punch at the goal yeah yeah i think uh, now to try to make an open game at that 11-0 uh, it's it's wasting it's wasting time and uh, it's uh, it just increase uh, the frustration of the team in my my choice. Uh, so Luckily, I'm a national coach. I'm never in a position. In it. <laughs> but uh, it's a question. I think it's uh, for me. It would be when I would be also team. I would say, okay, we concentrate just on defense. Uh, but it's very difficult to get this in the mind of the player. Mm -hmm. Uh, because this is because defense, def active. defensive play as well as offensive play can be very frustrating if you're taking score of the score of the score and if the uh, the attacking team is overpowering you. Okay, let's do basic defense. There should be always a goalkeeper. There should be always a defender. Yes. There would be a good good task already. But there you see now this open play. Yeah. This is just an invitation for Norway to create high the frustration to, to Vienna. They can choose whatever. The Norway can do all the 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 the, the, the trick plays or the all the consideration and they're making now goals which it looks like magic. Anyway, the 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 improvement the Norway keep the, the speed up, the concentration, the something like that, so... So, five seconds, so... I think the Vienna girls are happy that this is over. I mean, 
you, you know you're going to play against a very strong opponent in the first place and you might play against the champion of the Champions Cup yeah if you go get 5 or 12 it's a different it's a difference of course but as I said we don't know what what the, the coaching um, said before the game we don't know what their actual goal was what their target was maybe it was trying to get the ball and have their own fast breaks get into the opponent's half play there as much as possible yeah but yes 11 goals for the Norwegian women the Norwegian women one of the top contenders um, I mean they've been national championship they, they've been world champions they've been champions of the champions cup so very tough game to play uh, will be quite interesting to see how the other teams actually uh, turn out against uh, the Norwegian women. I think it's this week against the Karen, if I'm correct, isn't it? No, the, the next game is uh, Amma uh, against uh, Black Mermaids. No, I mean uh, um, in the in the yeah. uh, semi-finals. Yeah. So, so it will be interesting to see how the the. German champions can perform against uh, the Norwegians. Oh, it's very difficult to say something, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I can might be write down the result and then you can prove it later. I was right. The problem sometimes, if I'm right, it's not good for for the basic. Yeah. Yeah. If you. Fine. All right. I'll be leaving you now. I have to prepare for my own game. Okay, we have a little short change in the commentary box. Yeah, we were talking so much we did not check the, the, the chat. I have to excuse. Uh, okay, well, uh, hi everyone, I'm Kim and I'm, uh, I'm back to commentate this uh, upcoming match, which is um, Black Mermaids from Sweden towards um, Amagren from Denmark. Okay, so Amma will play in blue and the Black Mermaids will play in white. And as we can see, the white team is ready to start. Um, the blue team too, but we just don't see them because of the angle of the camera. This will be an interesting game to watch. Um, I'm here myself because uh, my team lost the Swedish Championship Finals against the Black Mermaids. Oh! So I know how good they are. Uh, so me myself could unfortunately not play. That's of course why they ah. why they won. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm cheering now for uh, Sweden, of oh. course. Okay. Uh, so then I should cheer for Denmark. Is that what you say? <laughs> I actually got some uh, fun facts from the team before I came here. Okay. Uh, Amagaren is. Uh, oh, we started. Did we start playing? No. Uh, Amagaran is uh, is a uh, part of Copenhagen, but it's not Copenhagen. It's like uh, out of Copenhagen, and uh, it's an island, and it's okay. a very nice, fancy, cool place. And then they started telling me about that back in the days, all the trash was transported there. Ah. But it's a really cool place now. So yeah. um, if you're interested in going to Copenhagen, go visit the Amagaran girls and. Um, Actually, a great time to do that is to play uh, on the Amagaran Cup, which is always around March, April. It's a really fun cup for not the super top teams, but like good teams. And this year they want to try to have uh, both uh, 
uh, a female league and a mixed league. Okay. So uh, all the girls who are watching, get your team together and come to a Magaren Cup. Yeah, basically... Uh